Ah, what a lovely day to do things. I've got this lovely desert temple which I'm gonna run. Wait, what's that? What? Ah! How? Well, I'll show you now in this video. What's up guys, Eddie67716 here, welcome to another normal tutorial video, and this one, I have made a miraculous breakthrough. Oops. Now, you see, I've been figuring out what you can do with minecarts when you like stack a bunch on one rail, then power that rail, and then send them off going into one direction. But I figured out, if you do that with TNT minecarts, you can make a good weapon that can travel on dirt, or in an underground tunnel, or down very slight slopes of like a two block or more gradient but a one block gradient is horrible so what this means is I have found out a, way, a scenario that can in most cases render TNT cannons somewhat useless and TNT IE missiles almost completely redundant the rain has started falling and things get a bit weird for this castle and you know why? Because they know their time is up. Now, I'm gonna come a, a distance away from this castle, you see. And what I'm, you need to do to build this is make sure you have a good line of sight straight towards your building. It doesn't matter if it has a block that's really close, but if, if it's a far away distance, you need to like make sure it has clear run right to it. So you can't just sh line it up and send it for this area, expecting to get your whole building. But this should have enough space. So what you need to do to build this is you need to place down a powered rail and either a block as a buffer or or you can just buffer it onto a block. And you need to place at least four TNT. But more is better. So that should be about ten or twelve. Now if I send it into this building it is going to be pummeled beyond recognition, I can tell you that. Look at that! Total destruction, and hardly anything left, and the only villagers alive are the ones that were kind of a good distance away. So this is a really good idea for besieging other players, and just review how to do it, mm. just you need 4 TNT, but more is better. And you can just stack as much as you want. If you stack too much, it can get impractical. So I'm just going to send this lot for the same fate. And... <laughs> it's kind of funny. So you can see it's really big. It's actually very powerful, as you can see from that clip I had at the beginning. And yeah, I'll just show you some basics on how to do this properly. And you can kill your enemies super easily without any detection. Now this here is an example of what not to do. You can't just build it on a one hill or more steep slope, because the TNT will just fall down and explode immediately. So, as you can see from this example, I got a button and some rails here, and if I press this, like it doesn't go straight for the waterfall, it like falls off and then it falls into the ground blows up. Now this can be good if there was like a base in this area and you can like if you have a base aligned with a mountain you can actually do that and get a good amount of damage but it, it, this is not just for destroying bases you can like destroy whole meetings of players inside a base if you do this just right. Okay so for this example I have a two block slope going down here. Now, it doesn't just blow up, but there is a very small bug that can happen, and one TNT will often get left behind. So I've got about 9 TNT here, and if I place about 9 TNT and then press this button, you're going to notice how after it goes down about 5 or 6 of the slopes, or is it 4, one TNT will get left behind, but the other 8 should keep going. And that's the biggest flaw with this design. Although, it didn't seem to do it this time. Funny, it did it every other time, but not this time. Maybe it has to be a huge amount, but often one gets left behind. But I can't seem to repeat it, even though I've got it to repeat five or six. <laughs> a flying fish. <laughs> 
Maybe it only happens when you like do a smaller amount. Like six maybe. It doesn't seem to be doing it anymore. Yeah, but sometimes don't be like don't be surprised if like one piece of TNT gets left behind. But usually you can just destroy one piece of TNT if it's left in the middle of nowhere. But when you stack them and you try to destroy them, that is horrible. But it does seem, seem to do it here, but you gotta be really be careful with stack TNT. This stuff is like nitroglycerin. If you step on it, sometimes you can just explode it spontaneously. If I take out the rails, and then this is better. Oh, no, that's just... So yeah, you gotta be really careful. This stuff can be quite volatile. Now this example is for you secret spies. I've got a setup here to like do the whole thing. But what I have here is an area which goes through this small one by one tunnel. If you keep going through here, you end up right around this area. And if I quickly turn my spectator mode on, you can see that it's under this leather worker and his hut built out of mostly Gippsland and Basalt and Blackstone. I really love most of the blocks added in 1.16 and 17. They're really, really good blocks. So what this means is, if I have this aligned perfectly, the TNT should go from here through this hole and destroy that house. So I'll place about 9 here, and I'll send this on its way, and the cargo is off. And now we just gotta wait for the surprise. Hello there, you leather worker. You you having the time of your life, right? Well, just be careful, because you might be having a blast. Hmm, maybe I should have used some more TNT. But it worked. It got the villager and the majority of his build. So you can use this for secret spy warfare. Perfect for getting enemies from a longer distance. And then if you rig your redstone right, you can like send like three or four bunches of these TNTs to make an even bigger explosion. Possibilities are limitless with this design. Okay, so my last test I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how good it actually is to do this in like survival mode. What you need to like do is like stack your TNT like this. Ah! Oh no! Oh no! Well, I'm glad I made backups. Unfortunately, I didn't back up as much as I did, but fortunately this circuit wasn't too hard to rebuild. So what I was gonna show you was, I was gonna show you how effective this actually is in survival mode. So if I equipped this armor on, and then add this shield, and then if I put all this stuff in my inventory, and then I set up these minecarts, everything should be f fine. I'll just set this up and then show you in action. Okay, now that I'm in survival mode, I can place down these TNT minecarts. And what this is going to show you is how res resilient this trap is to someone with like, like mostly fully enchanted armor and a shield. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit in this house and press the button that will activate the trap. That should start it going anytime soon. I'm going to stand back a little bit and then I'm going to hold my shield and we're going to see how resilient this whole setup is. It's coming any second now. Yeah, not really much you can do. So yeah, this is the trap in the nutshell. So that's all I'm going to show you with this trap, a revolutionary trap that can, in some circumstances, render TNT cannons and TNT missiles obsolete. So I hope you enjoyed this quicker tutorial on this, if you did enjoy it please leave a like, and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more content like this and to support my channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye!